Hello and thank you all for joining us today. My name is Eric Zimmerman and I'm a product marketing manager here at SailPoint. I'm also joined by two of my colleagues. Hi, I'm Alfredo Ramirez, product manager with Identity IQ. Hi, Jordan Mandernack. I'm also a product manager for Identity IQ. We're really excited to share some of the newest features and functionality in Identity IQ 8.3. So we'll kick things off today by taking a quick look at recent market trends before we dig into the new features and functionality in Identity IQ. We'll also share a brief look ahead before we open the floor for questions. And just a quick note, if you have questions throughout the presentation, you can submit them to the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. We have team members online who are ready to answer your questions, and we will take a few questions live at the end. We'll also be making this webinar and slides available on Compass within the next couple of days so that you can view it on demand. Before we jump into the newest release, we wanted to touch on some of the high-level trends we're seeing impact organizations like yours today. And this includes a shift to operations anywhere on any device, especially with the growth in remote work and the massive influx of new hires. These challenges are also include an evolution in IT environments and an explosion in cyber threats and new data privacy regulations. Most large enterprises house thousands to millions of identities, each with varying access requirements to on-premise resources and cloud and SaaS applications, which are constantly changing based on business needs. For the modern enterprise, securely connecting the right people to the right technology is incredibly complex and it has moved well beyond human capacity. So as we talk about identity security, SailPoint is truly at the core for the modern enterprise. And that really starts with our core competencies. Putting AI at the foundation, which you'll hear more about as we share updates on some of our new AI services functionality for roles. Seamless integration, making sure your organization can connect with the essential tools and services that they use every day. On this front, we'll be sharing details about Identity IQ's integration with Microsoft Teams. And then we have the other essential core components of identity security, delivering timely access and complete visibility in it for the enterprise. So as we look ahead, we'll share some of the newest improvements for role-based search, filtering, and analysis. With our newest release of Identity IQ, we're continuing to build on our core pillars of comprehensive identity security, grounded in intelligence, automation, and integration. And this means delivering intelligent 360 degree visibility and insight so you can adapt and ensure the security of every identity. Automation, Identity IQ is also helping automate and streamline identity processes to better discover, manage, and secure user access. And with the newest release, we're continuing to deliver seamless integration that extends your ability to control access across your INT environment. So again, thank you all for joining us today. I'll now hand it over to Identity IQ product manager, Alfredo Ramirez, to share more about the newest release. All right, thanks, Eric. So again, this is Alfredo Ramirez, product manager for Identity IQ, and we're really excited to share with you the items that recently went live with the release of Identity IQ 8.3. So here's a quick overview of the items you'll be seeing in 8.3. First, we have some role management improvements around search and filtering that I'll be touching on. Then I'll be handing over to Jordan to cover our new Microsoft Teams notifications. Then we will cover our continued integration work with AI services, specifically around role recommendations. Following that will be new functionality, making it easy for users to classify elevated access within the UI. Then I will pick up again to go over a few items that are listed here under business process improvements. So we've been listening to the market and we understand that one of the biggest obstacles to a successful row program is maintenance. The problem is that organizations access is constantly evolving. And if your role model fails to evolve as well, it will quickly become obsolete. If your organization already has a role program or is just starting one, the newest enhancements in Identity IQ 8.3 can help your team to quickly gain new insights into role-based models with cross-product filtering, to reduce role proliferation through more granular search options, validating that entitlement profiles are unique, up-to-date, and contain only the access that is needed. And by giving a bottom-up view or an entitlements up view of your organization's roles to better understand how changes to those roles and entitlements 
will impact the other objects that inherit, require, or permit those roles and entitlements. In role management, you will be able to search for roles based on an entitlement and optionally view the entire role inheritance structure associated with that entitlement from the bottom up. Again, the entitlements up associated to those roles. You can also filter roles based on the nature of the relationship to an entitlement or to another role. You could, for example, filter to show all roles which require IT role A, or filter to show all roles which inherit the role called Windows user. Additionally, we are now including filters in role management that will allow users to see which roles need to be updated. So now when filtering based on entitlements, users will be able to filter on invalid applications to see which roles are still granting access to an application that may have been retired or removed. And you can filter on missing entitlements and permissions to see which roles have entitlements in their profiles that no longer exist or have been renamed and then select those roles to be updated. In 8.3, we are also introducing new filters in access requests so that you can limit the list of available roles to those that grant access to a given application or those which provision a specific entitlement or permission on an application. And you can use this functionality to drive the adoption of your role program while reducing unnecessary access requests to specific entitlements or permissions, and instead looking to the role model to grant that access. In targeted certifications, you will be able to certify users who have roles that grant access to a particular entitlement or application, even if that access is part of a role. In the entitlement catalog, you can now filter entitlements based on those that are associated with a role and using the associated roles tab, you can view the details of that association. So if you're looking at a particular entitlement, you can be confident about knowing how that entitlement intersects with your broader role program. Finally, users will be able to generate a report of roles associated with certain access and a report of identities who are members of those roles associated with certain access. So again, we're very excited to be offering these new ways to search, filter, and really streamline your role program. From here, I'll hand it off to Jordan, who will kick off our first poll. So please be ready to respond. And then we will continue on with Microsoft Teams notifications. Thanks, Alfredo. Hi, all. My name is Jordan Mandernack, and I'm also an Identity IQ product manager. Here's our first poll on what collaboration tool that your organization uses. The options are Microsoft Teams, Slack, Workplace by Facebook, WebEx Teams, or other if you use another collaboration platform. If your organization uses multiple of these, please select the one that is more predominantly used. Thank you for your responses. For Identity IQ 8.3, we're excited to provide notifications via Microsoft Teams. These notifications will share the email notification templates. Therefore, you're able to leverage any links or customization that have already been built for an email. If you've configured Azure AD single sign-on, users will be brought seamlessly to that work item inside of Identity IQ directly if a link is configured in the notification. These notifications will allow you to accelerate critical requests by quickly providing access to these notifications. We'll also empower teams to reduce downtime to keep them productive. And finally, we want to streamline your communication by getting information to Microsoft Teams where employees are already spending their time. To enable this functionality, there will need to be additional components installed. We will provide documentation found on Compass to assist in understanding the architecture for this installation. Now that we've introduced notifications, we have a poll question on additional functionality within Slack or Microsoft Teams going forward. Would your organization allow requests, approvals, or certification decisions outside of the Identity IQ network and rely on the authentication of collaboration tools like Slack and Teams? Options here are yes, likely, unlikely, or something you're not interested in at this time and going to continue to rely on Identity IQ for authentication.
This release is now leveraging our AI engine to provide recommendations for roles in access request approvals and access reviews. As you can see in this screenshot, the recommendation will be a thumbs up or thumbs down if a recommendation can be calculated. If the approver wants to see more information, you're able to see the details behind this AI analysis. This is just the latest evolution as we continue to grow our AI capabilities. With this, we believe we can continue to drive high quality data-driven role programs by making better decisions based upon a data model. By leveraging AI, scaling a role program becomes easier when you can leverage recommendations and spend less time investigating the details because they've already been surfaced through a recommendation. Ultimately, our recommendations will help to achieve true governance to limit access where appropriate by ensuring that your users have the right access at the right time. We have another poll here related to future AI capabilities. How comfortable is your company with automating approvals or certifications based on certain criteria? The options here are very, you think AI is the future, moderate, you need to better understand how this analysis will be done, unlikely, human decisions are required on all or most of your approvals and certifications, or D, not at all, something you're just not interested with at this time. We will also better support Active Directory move and rename operations. This will propagate DN distinguished name changes through the Identity IQ object model. Identity IQ uses the distinguished name in many places to tie to AD accounts and groups. When an account or group is moved or a name is changed in Active Directory, the DN will change. We continue to recommend using the DN as a unique identifier with this update for all of your AD applications. This release will update the existing objects based upon native changes by using the GUID, a unique identifier, to identify that the DN has changed and then correctly modifying the object. Additionally, by synchronizing these native changes, there will be no need to do any manual updates for these associated objects. Finally, we will ensure provisioning success by detecting DN changes. For example, in activities such as an access request that has happened prior to the DN change, the approver will see that original DN, but through the provisioning stage, we can identify the change and seamlessly use the new DN. Next, we will discuss elevated access. This feature will allow you to classify a role or entitlement as elevated access. By classifying an item as elevated access, it provides clear visibility when requesting, certifying, or approving the role or entitlement. This ensures that these items will be treated with greater care. In large certifications, the badge icon will stick out and ensure the approver understands that it contains elevated access. The elevated access attribute will be included in reports, which can help with audits or to identify high risk areas. Finally, the elevated access property allows you to create your own workflows around them. For example, the process for acquiring elevated access may need more or different approvals while provisioning. To wrap up my section, we have two more brief polls. These are not directly related to features we're discussing today, but will help us to better understand the group we have attending this webinar. The first one is a simple yes-no question. Do you currently manage access to file and SharePoint sites? And our follow-up poll question here, do you currently have a data access governance solution? Yes, you use SailPoint File Access Manager. Yes, you use Veronis. Yes, you use StealthFits. Yes, you use another data access governance vendor. Or E, not at this time, you do not have a data access governance solution.
Thanks for your participation in these polls. I will now turn it back to Alfredo to cover the remaining features of 8.3. Thanks, Jordan. A good portion of our customers operate in highly regulated verticals like government, healthcare, and finance, and are using electronic signatures on top of their certifications and approvals. To meet compliance and increased security needs, many companies need to use alternate authentication types. So we are enhancing e-signature to be able to use SAML for these use cases. Utilizing SAML, electronic signature can now expand authentication options to include smart cards, common access cards, QR codes, or biometrics, to name a few. To improve visibility, audit event details have been added that will make it easy to review when these critical requests have been made. Prior to this update, Identity IQ used username and password for electronic signature only. Now, with Identity IQ 8.3, configure SAML authentication in Identity IQ. That method will be used by default for electronic signatures as well. And here are a few additional enhancements we would like to cover going into 8.3. The first is modern authentication for email notifications. This means that 8.3 will have the ability to support OAuth 2.0 authentication protocol for email notifications for any systems that require that authentication type. Second, the services collector mechanism, which sends data from Identity IQ to our AI services module, has un undergone extensive improvements for both speed and efficiency. Finally, for the many customers that utilize our SKIM API endpoint, we've heard you and have worked on improving documentation to make that framework easier to work with and configure. From here, I'll hand off to Jordan once again to take a quick look at how we're thinking about Identity IQ beyond 8.3. Thanks, Alfredo. We'll pause briefly for a disclaimer. The information on the next slide is confidential and forward-looking. This is not a commitment of delivery and things are subject to change. This slide covers the area we will be investing in going forward. If any of these areas interest you, we would love to schedule some time to speak with you about them, as we want to make sure that these features align with our users and their identity programs. Just contact your CSM or SailPoint representative and they can arrange a meeting. As noted previously, these features are in development and investigation stages at this time. There is uncertainty of what will make it into the Identity IQ product. The first area we're focusing on is access history. This is essentially a view of an identity and the timeline of that identity, the when, why, and how of access changes over time. This will allow for a better understanding of access provisioning and deprovisioning trends throughout your organization, giving a holistic view of changes for a given identity. The next area we are continuing to investigate is automated certifications. Our ultimate goal is to involve a human only when absolutely necessary. For example, if there have not been changes in a role or identity and the certification has been approved previously, we could auto-certify and notify as needed. This will reduce the need for large certification campaigns and make certifications more productive rather than tedious. However, we recognize that there are many industries with regulations that require complete certifications at regular intervals. We want to better understand these restrictions and how we can build this automation in the most effective way. The last item we will cover is exporting identity data. We have evaluated putting business intelligence tools into the product, but it was clear early on from discussions with customers that all of you either have a BI tool or could easily acquire one. The focus of this effort will be on providing the data in a meaningful format for your consumption, helping to provide a clear path on how to get just the data you need. These are just a few of the highlights of our upcoming features. Eric will now share additional ways on how to provide feedback to help shape the Identity IQ product. Thanks for that look ahead, Jordan. There's certainly a lot more to come. Uh, to keep learning or share ideas, we have a couple avenues available to you. For current customers and partners, you can of course visit the Compass community where you can search for answers or ask questions about the product. You can also find comprehensive documentation and release notes for Identity IQ 8.3. And as mentioned, we will make a copy of this presentation and webinar available to view on demand. We also encourage you to visit the SailPoint Ideas portal to browse through submitted ideas, vote on your favorites, add comments, or share your own. Again, thank you for joining us today. We'll be joining you shortly, so don't go anywhere.
So hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. Uh, I'm joined by Alfredo, Jordan, and Jeff Lakey, who are all product managers for Identity IQ. Uh, once again, we will be sending out a recording of this presentation along with uh, PowerPoint so you can dig in to see some of the finer details for what we shared today. Um, but let's go ahead and kick things off and, and dig into some of the Q&A. And um, again, as you go, feel free to continue to submit questions, but please use the Q&A box. And we'll do our best to answer as many of those as we have time for today. So let's start off. Uh, the first question we have um, is Teams, excuse me, is team notification only feature and not approve or review in Teams response? Is this free of cost for Teams notification feature? Yeah, so I'll take this one. At this point, our Microsoft Teams integration is going to be only notifications. We are evaluating further use cases, approvals, certifications, access requests, et cetera. Uh, definitely looking for feedback from the community on uh, where to focus there and kind of better understand um, how you're going to be integrating that with the authentication piece. That was the, the rationale for one of the polls in that area. And the second portion of this question, the Microsoft Teams feature is free. It's not an additional component, but you will need to do some additional installation steps. So there is a, a couple different components you need to install. So uh, just kind of follow our documentation on, on how to do that. And that's all on that one. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, the next question we have is our AI and MS Excuse me, sorry, just to disappear on my screen. Are AI and MS Teams integrations separately licensed? Um, yeah, as Jordan mentioned on the on the last question, the MS Teams uh, is not a separate license. That's uh, that comes with uh, Identity IQ eight point three standard. Uh, you know, you just have to do the configuration piece. AI is an additional uh, is an additional license. The AI modules uh, do have an additional license. Great. Next question we have, uh, is there a way to do a role membership certification by selecting business role owners instead of business role? Um, I don't, no, there's not currently, you can assign to the business role owners, but still the criteria that you would need to select uh, the roles that are included in the certification would be based on the role or the role type. Um, with a targeted certification, um, you could kind of, you could get close, you could select, uh, you know, roles based on the owner attribute in that targeted certification, and then you could sign, assign that certification to the owners. Uh, and so um, it wouldn't be a role membership certification, it would be a targeted certification, but that would uh, essentially do the same thing. Great. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, the next question, is Teams notification versus email or either, or can both be used? Can both be used for the same notification? Yeah, so there's a couple questions that have come in on what notifications are going to be used and what, what the templates are going to be. So I'll, I'll answer this question first. You have the option to do both Teams and email or email only. So you, you can configure kind of what you want to use. However, they do share the same notification templates. So when you go into uh, notifications today, it was previously email notifications. That's where you can customize your different templates. Those templates will then be shared for both email and Microsoft Teams notifications going forward. Awesome, thank you, Jordan. The next question, uh, what will frictionless automation certifications entail? I recall this from a previous Navigate session. Yeah, uh, a lot of this is still, you know, things that we're uh, doing research on, particularly on how to automate certifications. You know, we've got a lot of areas of the product where we can uh, kind of initiate certification campaigns based on uh, events or based on certain event triggers. And so we'd really be looking to kind of streamline and expand that functionality to make uh, the kickstarting uh, more targeted certification campaigns um, uh, easier to do and based on, uh, you know, sort of policies that can define exceptions, anything that falls outside of that policy, uh, we could uh, generate a certification 
for that. Um, but, uh, you know, this is very, very much still in the research stage. This is something that we're still, uh, you know, collecting and validating uh, our, our data on. So, um, you know, if this is something that you're interested in, if, if you would benefit from, you know, automation around certification, reach out to your CSM and you can schedule some time with the product team and we can go over use cases because that would be very helpful for us to know. Thank you. The next question, can you provide some additional insights around e-signature with biometrics? Yeah, so this is Alfredo here. Um, on the e-signature portion there, essentially it's gonna be using uh, whatever SAML configuration you have set up in Identity IQ. So um, the biometrics is an example of what some, uh, you know, some organizations are interested in, but it really depends on whatever you have, what system you have on the other side of your uh, SAML configuration. So in some cases that might be some sort of password list like a, like a smart card or biometric or it might be something else, but um, that's, that's the thinking there, just essentially whatever you have on the other side of that SAML connection. Awesome. I think we may have answered part of this next question, but I'll go ahead and read it in case there's not too much overlap. Uh, what kind of notification is possible to send on Teams, uh, work item, et cetera, any programmatic uh, notifications using rules, et cetera? Um, it's, uh, it's any notification that the product can generate. Um, so yeah, any work item notification, remediation notification, uh, escalations, um, new access reviews, uh, really anything where you would normally receive an email notification from Identity IQ, you can now receive that notification in Teams. Jordan, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the one area where we may not be sending those is report emails. Um, we, I don't believe that we're sending Teams notifications uh, for generated reports. That is correct. That is correct. So basically the, the templates that you can configure in your notification settings, those are the templates that, that are able to be shared with Microsoft Teams. The, the report emails will not be sent via Teams. Awesome. Well, one other question about uh, the changes for targeted certifications with roles. Uh, does this mean that a certification allows, allows entitlement bundled in a role to be removed? but not the role itself. That is other entitlements bundled in the role persist. No, that you, uh, no, you, in the targeted certification, everything would be uh, rolled up into the role. Um, you can just filter those roles based on the entitlements. So uh, let me include any roles in this uh, certification that grant access to AD group B. Um, that would include that role in the certification. If you were to revoke that role, you would be revoking that role and, and all of the access associated with it, not just that uh, entitlement that's a part of the role. Uh, to you know, take actions on individual entitlements that might be part of roles, I you would still need to use the entitlement owner certification. Next question, uh, good support for AD is implemented with AD connector, uh, or this is a separate workflow triggered by native changes detection, sorry, sorry, native change detection. How do you activate uh, good support? Um, this is, uh, it is a new part of the uh, aggregation task. Uh, we will detect those uh, DN changes uh, as a part of net aggregation and generate the events to propagate those uh, changes throughout the Identity IQ object model. Uh, it uh, will work out of the box. There's no separate configurations to make, although you can turn it off. Um, we can include uh, a link to Identity IQ documentation for 8.3 uh, when this webinar is posted, and you can read a little bit more about how those configurations uh, are set up, but your standard uh, AD application connector uh, that you have configured, provided that you're using DN as the native identifier, uh, will already support uh, the changes coming in 8.3. There's no um, there's no configurations that need to be made to the application. Thanks, Jeff. And following on another question about that, uh, are the changes for rename using GUID applicable for user objects and group objects? Yes, uh, the, those are the type, uh, those are the, the two that we are um, uh, updating would be accounts and, and groups. So AD accounts 
uh, which have a DN associated in the AD groups as well. When those are moved or renamed, that's when we're uh, doing the updates. Awesome. And we have another question about the uh, Microsoft Teams update. This one uh, for Jordan, I believe. Uh, we allow users to approve via email, but Microsoft uh, is deprecating the function. Does SailPoint plan to replace it? So at this time, we don't have direct plans to replace that functionality. However, we are evaluating as we look into Microsoft Teams approvals, how we can kind of grow our approvals outside of our regular logging into identity IQ uh, type of method. However, very early on in that stage, so happy to hear from any of you kind of follow up with the PM team outside of this to get more information on your use cases so that we can make sure we implement something that, that does replace the functionality you're referring to there. We have another question around uh, the object good. Uh, please elaborate a bit more on the AD move rename feature. Does this support uh, forest forest migrations where the object good will change? Um, that's an interesting question. Um, I I don't believe so. I believe if there's a new, if you change the forest that would create a new DN, it would also create uh, a new uh, GUID. At that point, it's a new object uh, as far as we're concerned. So we, we would aggregate that as a new object. Um, it, it It's possible that there's some details of this use case that I've just, you know, can't, can't quite uh, understand. So, um, I'll reach out after this uh, after this webinar, and, and uh, we can we can go over your use case a little more specifically. It, it might be able to to handle it. I'm not entirely sure. I just need a little bit more detail than we can handle here on this webinar. So I'll I'll be in touch. Perfect. Uh, another question about uh, release. Uh, I meant to ask uh, eight point three release date and Teams integration release date. Um, I think looking for a little bit more specifics on the timing uh, for some of that and when uh, that will uh, be released. Uh, 8.3 P1, uh, I don't think we have a firm release date uh, right now, but I would expect that to come uh, towards uh, late summer, uh, probably around August would be, would be my guess. Um, and then I'll uh, I'll refer to Jordan on the uh, Teams integration question. Yeah, so Teams is officially released. That is posted on Compass, so you have the ability to update that, and that will be included in in patches for eight point three going forward. Awesome. Another question about a Teams. If we have Teams notifications enabled, but the work item is assigned to a work group, will the notifications on Teams sent to individuals uh, in work group? I think there's a, a bit of a uh, question at the end, but Jordan, does that question make sense to you? Or yeah, you yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So in inside of work groups, you can configure how those notifications get sent out. So when you're configuring that work group, there's a checkbox to send individual emails. If that is enabled and you have Microsoft Teams enabled, then the notification is going to be sent to those individuals inside of Microsoft Teams. However, uh, it's not able to send to a group email. So if you have your work groups configured to be sent out to a shared email box, we're not able to track down those individuals to send the notifications nor are we able to create a group or a team inside of Microsoft Teams. So you need to have that individual identity being sent that notification because that's how we do the correlation with Microsoft Teams. We're using the Azure AD application to correlate that identity to that Microsoft Teams user. And, and that's how we're doing that notification. So in short, you're able to send work group notifications if you've configured the work group to send individual emails or individual notifications. Great. Then we have a question about roles. Um, are there any plans uh, to enhance role composition certification? Uh, this is regarding the user interface, uh, review profiles and IT roles rather than the entitlements themselves, uh, et cetera. Yeah, um, this one is, is near and dear to my heart. Um, there, there are no such enhancements in uh, 8.3, uh, unfortunately, but it's something that we're looking at very closely 
for the future release um, uh, for our future releases. Um, the role composition certification, uh, exactly like you say, we would now that we have this kind of uh, ability to filter easier based on the entitlements that are included on roles, uh, we really want to make that certification so that, uh, you know, things are less kind of put together in, in a profile, the entitlements can be uh, certified individually and also uh, provide some more detail on those entitlements. Uh, right now, it really is just a filter string. Uh, so we'd want to be able to see that, uh, you know, entitlement details tab so you can view all the information uh, that you would normally see there uh, in, a, in an identity type certification. Uh, so that's something that we would like to do with the role composition certification and the other uh, elements uh, that we really would like to enhance on that cert is the ability to certify um, assignment rules, uh, you know, who, who is going to uh, automatically be assigned this role and by what criteria criteria. Uh, currently, those are not included in that cert type. And, um, you know, that would be uh, a really good way to sort of drive, um, you know, automating role assignment was if people had more uh, insight and governance over those assignment rules. So uh, my answer is not to, not today, not in the immediate future, but we are uh, looking pretty closely at some enhancements to that certification. And um, I'll put my name out there. Uh, I get, I will uh, I'll follow back up with you after this uh, after this webinar and after we get all the uh, questions uh, kind of put together um, and maybe we can we can schedule a call and kind of talk about your role comp cert use cases um, and and talk about what you how you'd like to see uh, the behavior of that cert go so thank you thanks Jeff. Then we have one more question. And, and again, just a reminder, if you have additional questions, please continue to put them in the Q&A uh, and we'll answer those as we go. Um, the next one, along the same lines as the elevated access flag for roles and entitlements, is there going to be more flexibility in displaying them, uh, sorting them? For example, typical role entitlement listed first to make it easier on the end user. Um. We will have flexibility in terms of uh, being able to filter. So you'll have filter options so you can filter those elevated uh, roles or elevated entitlements. Um, sort of not anything for the sort by default, uh, unfortunately, on those on those values um, or or any other kind of defined values. Um, you know, kind of one of our major efforts going forward, uh, you know, after 8.3 and, and, you know, for the next few releases uh, is really going to be improving the user experience that, you know, uh, Jordan and Alfredo referred to this. Um, and so kind of any ways in which we can make uh, Identity IQ easier for, you know, end users, for admins, uh, it's something we're going to be looking very closely at. So this kind of feedback, you know, having uh, more flexibility in displaying things, sorting things, commonly used roles, commonly used entitlements towards the top. Um, you know, these are all the kind of use cases that we would be very interested in uh, in in hearing from uh, hearing from our customers. And so, um, you know, reach out to your CSM. I would say uh, if you have you know UI UX feedback, um, and uh, yeah, we'd love to have some conversations about this. So. I would say uh, nothing at nothing nothing at the moment, but you know it's something that we're looking at going forward. Thanks, Jeff. We have another question uh, regarding uh, object good. Uh, we currently use object good as native identifier for AD. Will we be able to continue using that, or will we have to replace that with with a distinguished name? Good question. Um, so uh, kind of want to clarify, uh, we'll be able to, will we have to, um, you know, the answer to those questions is, is uh, you know, will you be able to continue using it? Yes. Uh, will you have to replace it? No. Uh, however, uh, the big kind of asterisk on that is that our new functionality around the, you know, propagating those DN changes whenever there's a, a move or rename, um, that is based on distinguished name being the native identifier. So if you would like to take advantage of that, uh, of that functionality that we're delivering in 8.3 uh, to support those move renames and support those DN updates, uh, you would need to have DN as the native identifier uh, on AD. 
Uh, if you have object GUID as the native identifier, if that's working for you, if you're not running into problems with your object model, um, you know, you by all means, you can continue with that. We support it. You're not going to have anything broken or, uh, you know, really experience any more issues than, than you are currently. Um, but the, the new functionality around updating DNs is, you know, assuming that you're using the DN as the native identifier uh, in your object model. And so that's where we'd be, you know, going in and updating that. So um, I would say, um, you know, keep on keeping on if you like. Um, but, uh, you know, if you, if you do want to take advantage of those DN uh, updates and those kind of uh, response, uh, propagating those changes in response to native uh, DN changes, uh, you would need to uh, reconfigure your application to use distinguished name. Thank you, Jeff. And we have another question regarding collaboration tools. I think this came out of the discussion around Microsoft Teams. What is the roadmap for Slack notifications approvals as uh, supported in Identity Now? So uh, just to clarify here, our, our Identity Now product does support integration with Slack. Uh, we're evaluating that fr from an Identity IQ perspective. We have some unique challenges being uh, self-hosted, not having direct access to, to the cloud. And, and those are some of the things we had to overcome for this Microsoft Teams uh, integration. However, we are continuing to monitor um, usage. That's exactly why we uh, put the, the poll question out there. Definitely uh, would like to follow up with you and really kind of holistically all of our customers try to understand how many users would like to see Slack versus additional Teams functionality and, and all of that. Really trying to get our hands around that so we spend uh, our time in the right places. So to, to answer that question very directly, we're not actively working on a Slack integration. However, we're continuing to monitor and evaluate what it would take to get there. So any feedback anyone has on that is definitely appreciated. Awesome. Thank you, Jordan. Um, so again, uh, we're winding down with questions. I just wanted to remind everybody that a copy of this webinar, this recording will be uh, shared with everybody. Uh, and we'll also share a PowerPoint so you can dig into any of the details. And as mentioned before, all of the release notes and additional information is available on Compass for current customers. And we encourage you again uh, to reach out to your CSMs if you have additional questions and can get in touch with the product management team. So thank you all. Um, and we look forward to, to hearing from you and continuing this journey. Thank you. <laughs>